Now the next book in our uh, summer book club in conjunction with WH Smith is Every Last One by Anna Quinlan. Um, it's absolutely spellbinding and if you like Jodie Pico novels, and of course she's hugely successful, um, you will love this because it takes the same kind of very ordinary seeming family situation, takes it to an extreme and tragic um, end and then sees how the family copes with what happens afterwards and with the, the extreme grief that it, uh, it provokes. Um, Mary Beth Latham is the sort of heroine of the story, if you like. She's an ordinary American housewife. She lives in New England. She's got a perfectly uh, prosperous middle-class existence. She's happily married. She has three teenage children. Um, she thinks nothing happens in her life. That she grumbles that it's so uneventful. Um, that it's that you know she had children. She gets irritable with. They get irritable with her as they all do. She gets irritable with her husband. He gets irritable back. But actually, nothing happens in her life until one night, one spectacular, horrible, fateful night, which changes her life forever and that of her family for very, very, very much the worse in a very, very violent scene. The novel then picks up. Um, and it deals with how Mary Beth and what remains of her family actually manage to cope with their lives. Um, Anna Quindlen, who is the, the writer of this book, unfortunately is in America and couldn't be with us today, uh, but we asked her a few questions. Um, I'm a writer who sits down at the computer every day and is confident that she's going to have nothing to say and if she does say it, she's not going to say it well. I have to say, um, I'm a little terrified of writing. Um, I always come to a blank screen with trepidation. I hate writing, but I love having written and I can't get one without the other. Look, it would be wonderful to be able to write novels that are about people being happy all the time. In fact, one fine novelist, Lori Colwyn, did. But the truth of the matter is that most novels are about conflict. They're about some moment or moments of truth. And that means that they frequently have a dark heart. I don't think I'm much different um, than other novelists in that regard. With comic novelists, it might be slightly um, less harsh, but I think most um, literary novelists write about those moments when uh, the serpent in Eden glides out of the tree and offers someone an apple. This is my sixth novel and I'm beginning to think I should lie about my process. I feel as though I should make it sound so purposeful, as though I have this great map of the plot and I know exactly who does what to who at any moment. That couldn't be less true. Um, I'm a very character-driven novelist. I, I form a sense of my characters over time. And I always think the plot is what happens when you put enough people in the room at the same time. So I'm much more interested in the people than I am in the plot. I know them going in. I frequently don't know what they're going to do. I would describe myself as a reluctant writer. Um, Sometimes people say, what makes you write? And I say contractual obligation, and I'm only half kidding. Um, the truth of the matter is, this is what I know how to do, and so I keep on doing it. Um, but there really is an element of, um, of fear there that never goes away. Not that you can't write, because I'm always pretty able to put myself in a chair and string together some nouns and verbs. I was a newspaper reporter for many years and if you don't know how to do that then you might as well get out of the business. But I think almost all writers fear that disconnect between the ideal that's in their mind 
and the real that's on the page. Um, I'm pretty tormented by that. I'm almost done my next book, which is a memoir about aging. Um, I'll be 60 next year, and that's when it will come out. And um, it's about the fact that during the span of my life, we've gained 12 years in life expectancy. Um, and it's made us think in a different way about our 50s, our 60s, even our 70s. I'm going to explore all that in memoir form. Anna Quinlan. Thank you very much, Anna, and good luck with the, the book. It's going to do very well. It's a fantastic read. And if you want to know more about Anna, uh, more about the book itself, uh, what Judy and I said about it in our reviews, what you're saying about it in your reviews, all online, you go to the WH Smith website, which is www.whsmith.co.uk forward slash Richard and Judy.